Excellent news for retirees in Canada. The most recent information on direct payments, which start on Monday, is provided in this video. You will earn $2,300 if you are eligible for the Canadian Pension Plan CPP and $1,300 if you are on the Guaranteed Income Supplement, guys. The specifics of these payments, including how and when you'll get the cash, identifying yourself as someone who qualifies for CPP in GS payments, how these payments will impact your finances and what your monthly budget would look like with this extra cash, hints for handling this more cash, useful guidance on how to spend or conserve huge sums of money. We will also address frequently asked topics like what to do in the event that your payment is delayed. Can you obtain your GIs and CPP benefits at the same time? Do these payments have any tax ramifications? All retirees and those preparing for retirement should take note of this update. Keep yourself updated about these payments to ensure you receive all the benefits you are entitled to. The government has scheduled significant direct payments through the Guaranteed Income Supplement GEIs and Canada Pension Plan CPP programs in an unexpected move that has stunned pensioners across the country. With up to $2,000 in CPP benefits and $1,300 in GIs payments, these payments, which are scheduled to be dispersed on Monday, are expected to significantly alleviate financial hardship for qualifying seniors in Canada. The nation's retired populace is both excited and curious about this unexpected windfall. For many Canadians, the foundation of their retirement income is the Canada Pension Plan, or CPP. For those who qualify, this contributory earnings-related social insurance scheme offers a monthly pension. The regular CPP payments have been significantly increased by the recently announced $2,300 payment. About 25% of the earnings that you use to fund the plan are intended to be replaced by the CPP. The CPP is a government program to which employers and employees both contribute, with self-employed people covering both costs. The normal age to begin getting a CPP retirement pension is 65, but you can generally begin collecting one at age 60. You have the option of starting your pension before age 65, but at a lower rate, or after age 65, but at a higher rate. All of the $2,300 in CPP payments are paid at once they do not come from the normal monthly benefits. It is anticipated that all current CPP claimants will be eligible, while specific details are still forthcoming. The payment, which is expected to be made on Monday, is meant to give pensioners extra financial support, possibly in reaction to growing living expenses or other financial difficulties. The maximum monthly CPP retirement benefit for 2024, beginning at age 65, is $1,364.60 dollars to put this payment into context. Accordingly, the $2,300 payout represents about 1.7 months worth of the highest possible CPP benefit. This payment may make up an even larger share of the annual CPP income for persons getting average or below average benefits. Another essential part of Canada's retirement income system that targets low-income seniors is the Guaranteed Income Supplement, or GIS. For those who qualify, the $1,300 GIS payout is a significant increase. For low-income Old Age Security OIS pension beneficiaries who reside in Canada, the GIS offers a monthly non-taxable payment. To be eligible for GIS, you have to be receiving the OAS pension and meet certain income conditions. With the GIS, you usually have to apply, unlike the OAS, which is usually automatic. The GIS the amount that you receive is determined by your income and marital status. The $1,300 GIS payment, like the CPP payment, is an additional one-time payment made on top of the regular monthly benefits. This payment is anticipated to be available to all current GIS beneficiaries. The payment is intended to give further assistance to Canada's most economically disadvantaged seniors and is slated to be dispersed on Monday along with the CPP payment. To put this amount in perspective, the maximum monthly GIS payment for an individual from April to June of 2024 is $1,065.47. This indicates that the $1,300 payment exceeds the maximum monthly GIS rate by more than a full month. This payment may account for an even greater percentage of the yearly GIS income for many recipients who frequently get less than the maximum. Although the complete eligibility requirements for these payments have not yet been disclosed, we can infer some reasonable assumptions based on how these normally function. Eligibility for the $2,300 CPP payment is likely to depend on a number of factors, such as receiving CPP retirement benefits currently, possibly meeting residency requirements, e.g., residing in Canada, meeting age restrictions, e.g., 60 years of age or older, and possibly qualifying for pro-rating if one recently began receiving CPP retirement benefits. 
probable qualifying requirements for the $1,300 GIS. Payment include receiving OAS pension, being a resident of Canada, satisfying income thresholds in accordance with standard GIS requirements and currently receiving GIS benefits. Certain groups may be given special considerations. These include recent applicants who applied for CPP or GIS, but haven't yet started receiving benefits non-resident recipients, Canadians residing overseas who receive CPP may not be eligible recipients of disability benefits clarification is needed regarding how this payment relates to recipients of CPP. Disability benefits and recipients of survivor's pension clarification is needed regarding eligibility for recipients of CPP. Survivor's benefits. If you qualify, it's imperative to make sure you're prepared to receive these payouts because of the significant sums at stake. You can take some actions such as making sure your direct deposit information is accurate, confirming that your address is current with Service Canada, and making sure your tax filings are current as GIS. Eligibility is frequently dependent on your income tax return. It's also critical to keep an eye out for announcements on official channels such as the Government of Canada website, to follow up on any correspondence from Service Canada, and to check your My Service Canada account for changes. Many Canadian retirees' financial circumstances could be considerably impacted by these substantial one-time payments. These payments may offer much-needed financial assistance to many seniors, particularly those on fixed incomes, enabling them to pay for necessities like groceries, prescription drugs, and utility bills. Some retirees may use the money to finance home improvements, especially those related to aging and place modifications, or to pay off credit card debt or other outstanding obligations. These monies, although a one-time payment, may also help maintain long-term financial security. The funds could be invested for possible future growth, transferred to savings accounts for unforeseen future expenses, or used to top off tax-free savings accounts. Beyond just financial concerns, these contributions may enable improvements in quality of life, including leisure or vacation, family gifts, or medical costs not covered by private insurance or government health plans. The fact that these contributions were unexpected may have favorable psychological benefits, lowering financial stress, boosting security, and giving seniors a sense that their needs are being acknowledged and met by the government. These payments have wider economic ramifications, even though their main goal is to support specific retirees. Local companies may notice a boost in income when retirees spend these cash, potentially producing a multiplier effect that encourages additional economic activity. Some sectors of the economy, including healthcare, home improvement, or travel, may experience larger gains than others. Nonetheless, an abrupt surge in expenditure may exacerbate inflationary pressures, especially in industries serving the elderly. The government will need to factor in this substantial expense in its budget planning from the standpoint of fiscal policy. This action may raise expectations for future ones of a similar nature, casting doubt on the long-term viability of such large one-time payments. A rise in deposits for financial institutions could result from some retirees choosing to save instead of spending their money, which could have an impact on savings rates as well. It's useful to contrast these payments with senior support programs in order to better appreciate their significance. The government implemented a number of senior assistance programs during the COVID-19 epidemic, including a one-time, tax-free payment of up to $500 for qualified seniors in 2020 and brief increases to OAS and GIs. Compared to these earlier attempts, the new payments are significantly higher. They also deviate from the standard modifications to these programs, like the CPP boost that started in 2019 and the regular indexation of GIs and CPPP benefits to inflation. These payouts will be welcomed by many, but they can also come under fire. Concerns regarding the effect on the national debt and the long-term viability of such huge one-time payments may arise. It may be debated whether the money should be directed more toward helping people in need and why recipients of CPP and GS get the same amount regardless of their socioeconomic status. Concerns regarding fairness in terms of intergenerational equity and the propriety of giving substantial benefits to a single demographic group may also exist. These large one-time payouts may have a significant impact on Canadian retirement policy. They could create a precedent that influences long-term planning for both the government and individuals and raises expectations of similar support in the future. The payments might lead to calls for long-term increases to CPP and GIs as well as a more widespread conversation regarding the sufficiency of the present retirement benefits. This project may spark fresh ideas for assisting retirees and result in benefit schemes that are more adaptable or responsive. It's crucial that those getting these payments think about the best ways to use them. 
This could entail evaluating your existing financial status, taking into account both short-term requirements and long-term financial goals, and taking into account debts, savings, and recurring spending. Making a list of all the possible uses for the funds, ranging from necessities to wants, and weighing the long-term effects of such decisions might be beneficial. A financial advisor could be of assistance to some retirees in deciding how best to spend these money and examining any potential tax ramifications, particularly with regard to the CPP payment, which is probably going to be taxed. Retirees should make plans for any changes or revisions because these payments are unexpected. This entails being aware of any updates or modifications to the payment schedules, as well as any steps necessary to guarantee that the payments are received. It's critical to be adaptable when creating plans for the use of these funds and to think about having a backup plan in place in case the quantity or timing of the funding changes at the last minute. Additionally, it's critical to keep in mind that these are one-time payments and modify your financial plan appropriately, avoiding committing to long-term expenses based only on these payments.